Happy Tuesday, my soul friends. Today, we're going to ask your guardian angels and spirits to reveal to you about this person you're thinking right now, whether they're an old acquaintance or someone you just met. We're taking a look at whether they are currently and, of course, further down the line in the near future and in the long run, uh, whether they're actually a friend or a foe. Please hold this person in your mind and focus on the intention of requesting these three cauldrons uh, to show as to which one or which ones of these three cauldrons are aligning with your intuition. Ask your guardians to provide an answer and some insight. Pause the video if you need more time to meditate on it. And when you come back, please pick your cauldron or cauldrons. Cauldron 1, Tangerine Twilight. This is how your cauldron makes me feel. I can almost feel the zest of these golden lemons and citrus taste of these tangerines in my mouth. Well, <laughs> I think the relationship between this person and you definitely resembles such a taste, sprinkled with the lemon zest and filled with golden morning sun rays. I'm not completely sure though for everyone every single each one of you as to how and where you guys met uh, but i feel the warmth and refreshing air in the morning so perhaps you guys met or both prefer morning over night uh, so first of all let me introduce you today i'm going to be using the famous celtic cross spread my mentor taught me this and I've always felt the magic and how much answers it provides uh, to when I'm doing reading for people. So I'm using this spread for you, for your friend or foe question too. Card number one, I asked, I asked the, the guardians about how, you're, how you guys are getting along right now. How your relationship looks objectively right now, still I haven't asked about what you guys are exactly. You guys could be friends, family, potential romantic partners, uh, business cooperation going on, uh, colleagues, uh, neighbors, boss and employee, anything. I believe we'll see that later. We'll get to see that later for sure. Card number one for you is 10 of wands, Burton. Uh, objectively speaking, your current relationship looks like 10 of wands. I see two people working very hard. You guys both are working almost around the clock. You two are very diligent workers. Yeah, I see two people overly overburdened, uh, not by physical weight, but by the relentless march of time. It seems like you are both worrying about your own business more, like you are not spending enough time to really get to know each other. Um, objectively speaking, you don't spend time enough together for either one of you to get to know the other person's intention or motive or whatever in this connection. Next, let's see the challenge as well as the beneficial energy that's at play right now. The challenge lies in both of you already have your separate uh, priorities pretty much all set up well and you're not really considered changing anything just yet. Uh, I mean the stability part. Not to mention these priorities have been set due to the consistent juggling of life and money and maybe even identities already. You both have your lives set up and running and so far they've provided you with enough stability and you are not thinking too much about making any kind of drastic change or move away from the set uh, decent lives or lifestyles you two could be planning to begin some kind of business uh, venture together and that will require both of you uh, to put in equal level of contribution, you need to learn how to delegate your uh, workload and manage your limited time and energy even better, even more precisely. You are, um, I think you guys want to embark on this new venture, not only because you want to extend the digits of the number on your paychecks, I feel. 
This new business venture also makes your heart overflow with purpose. The challenge looks like to me mostly due to if you start this new venture, then you still have your current jobs to do, which means you guys will have to learn to stretch time to try even make the most of those stolen moments between your shifts even. That sounds really exhausting. And since I'm doing this exact exact thing I'm doing <laughs> currently, but on my own, so I completely understand the struggles and a lot of the times exhaustion, maybe not up in your brain, in your mind, maybe you'll continue to burn like never ceasing fire in your mind, the passion, the drive and everything. You don't mind working like 15 to 16 hours a day, but physically down to your body, I mean, I understand, I really do. Um, where the challenge really comes from is like these moments of your like mental, not mental, but physical exhaustion. And there's challenge and there's opportunity too. You'll slowly hatch a plan, L literally like hatching a plan. Um, you'll know how to best delegate tasks. For example, whose skill fits what? Like who's good at managing finances? Who can code? Who's got better entrepreneur instincts? Who's good data analyst? Uh, who, who's, who knows what to do about graphics, etc., etc. And for the most part, it's also of great significance. I believe that both of you got to like really really trust each other so you can just completely let go of the other person's tasks and not try to correct them and teach them what to do when you already decided together beforehand that they would be the other person the other one uh, person's job who's going to take care of that part of the business right so i think uh, through learning the art of delegation um trusting your business partner and and juggling your personal multiple work like simultaneously you can actually turn the challenge into a golden opportunity my dear cauldron one let's see card number three for the question what's the underlying most likely you're both unconscious of it what's the true reason of your current connection we have uh, we have King of Swords authority. Remember, I mentioned you guys are starting such a new chapter in your lives, not only to increase the digits on your paychecks, <laughs> but also the overflowing sense of purpose. So we're just gonna confirm, validate such purpose for you. You guys go ahead on this journey with a clear mind and guided by curiosity, like real truth seekers i see this image of you two meeting at a coffee shop and it gives this sensation of a collision of uh caffeine and purpose am i being cheesy <laughs> but it's not though it's your gathering when you're discussing about this matter i can just feel your conversation flow really naturally really easily especially when you are talking about this topic of your desired new business adventure, preferably with a partner. And that's really what I feel like and it looks like in my eyes. A sense of purpose, an intellectual pursuit, and a dose of curiosity. Voila! So I couldn't help but want to follow up right away with the question, um, what's in your recent past that result in your current connection turning out like, like it is at this moment? And we got King of Cups for you. King of Cups. Control. Literally, King of Cups is a character, the archetype of someone who's leading with their emotions, well managed, um, combining their wisdom with empathy. You had a, a recent incident that caused you to regain the trust of humanity. You used to think that you might have permanently lost it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and this person, I see that 
they've probably had some accumulated、uh, occurrences in their life that made them cry or become fragile and less trustful than they once were. But I guess it was you who really convinced this person to open their heart to give. Uh, themselves a chance to again retrieve their confidence and trust on people. In other words, you have already picked yourself up when either you or they initiated the conversation of potentially the beginning of a joint collaborative journey, and then you were the reason, the one who's got such persuasive presence to impress them, and that was why this whole thing. Like a spark, even got a chance to be ignited. That's wonderful, huh? <laughs> I think perhaps you got this hidden talent of decoding people's people's purpose. I mean, you can tell who's lost in the labyrinth of their own dreams. Your eyes are windows into a parallel universe where you can vaguely, vaguely see the person you're talking with. Doing something else completely different that can really make them shine, rather than getting stuck in what they're doing now. You may not be the person who's like talk like a, a motivational speaker, but you vividly display your sincerity, and that's key. Why people really feel they can count on your words. How about we continue by asking your guardians? What resource, both of your strength and skills, that you guys can rely on and employ to further such connection or the the venture? Who, Ace of Wands, energy? So far, no major arcana or any pentacles in your spread, but it's looking awesome already. That's for sure. And we'll check on the overall pattern for your spread later. Uh, immediately, I'm not gonna lie. Your connection feels fiery, Ace of Wands. A great opportunity if you fully grasp and manifest it. It will fulfill your goal, the goal, the ultimate goal you have in mind right now. I'm, I'm seeing. I can even see this man or woman with auburn hair or eyes who walks into a place like. The arrival of a storm in autumn. One of you is the creative force, and the other is the analytical mind. Together, you generate a bunch of ideas. Your your union is like the kind that can spark wildfires when you're meeting, when you're sharing ideas and mapping out plans. Your future competitors are gonna scramble all over. For extinguishers, <laughs> I can tell you that. I don't know what you're gonna name your startup. Could it be something like Ruby Innovations? <laughs> I'm I'm just trying to put a smile on your face, and I'll tell you about that later. But indeed, I think your startup may have something to do with tech. Are you trying to disrupt the tech industry? No, maybe not disrupt. Cooperate or take good use of modern tech-related aspects. You want to create user interfa interfaces that feel like velvet, or you want to use algorithms、uh, that seem like seem like jazz, or both. Maybe you use tech. You use tech to crunch numbers efficiently, such as market trends, investment forecasts. A、uh, risk assessment.、Uh, I brought up Ruby. <laughs> I want to clarify here. Actually, I was just trying to describe the feeling your mutual vision gave me. It was like Ruby, and Ruby is a gemstone that holds passion and precision in equal measure. Exactly what your vision looks like. Am I right? What's the probable, possible short-term development of such connection? Um,、uh, what's this ten of swords, despair, trying to tell us? Hmm. Let me think. 
something's gonna reach its lowest point any minute from now. Um, your partnership began with a bit of hopelessness. It would take maybe several late night brainstorming sessions to help you guys eventually figure out the resolution since you positively and enthusiastically eagerly envision to build something that will leave a legacy maybe you would imagine your brand name would carry such a legacy through time you would like to feel supercharged and basically invincible you are aiming pretty high right from the start to be honest Within the first few months, when you practically just began the pursuit, when at first you haven't been able to see your desired outcome, a crack may appear. Your smiles might become a bit strained and despair might creep in. So the pragmatic side of you thinking about profits not coming in uh, on time to support your next expansion, I see the hopelessness might try to stir stir the pot and make you wonder our dreams are futile we can never succeed like this and the dreamer sides of you must then have responded with um my creativity is not enough it's liable for our failure or am i drowning in a sea of mediocrity already but believe me what you're chasing aren't just illusion maybe there will be times when you both feel like your outlook on such business had already splintered and your own your own perspective and influence on this entrepreneurial connection is like three of swords sorrow there will be times you wanted to dismiss or you thought your ideas were dismissed and you were being labeled as impractical or daydreamy when such moments of pain occurs, my dear Cauldron One, just know that the pain comes from growth and you can heal. Hopelessness may want you to quit. I really, really understand that. It may urge you to turn your smile upside down and retreat into resignation. You might stop going to your meetings for a period of time as you felt like. You felt like your passion waned a little. But I want to tell you, just as you see your connection fray and your plan seems like falling apart, kind of like a rope extending and stretching beyond its limits, I really think you can consider your action, the action you're thinking about taking, reconsider that. You can be honest and open to simply throw out your desperation instead of allowing such tension to gradually swallow or suffocate you both. Note that your partnership is far from not working. You will start with the, start this journey with each other together and this bond has resolution and determination written all over on it. As long as you stay away from outside influence, such as jealousy or betrayal, so long as you hold your ground to stay away from those kinds of things, honestly, I think you'll be able to break free from such temporary feeling of disappointment and revisit that the despair actually was only a really merely temporary state only. It's not like the final judgment day, right? You think so? <laughs> Actually, for the eighth question, I asked your guardians about there, the person, because we've already got yours. Now we can turn to check on the other person, your, your potential business partner, uh, their impact on the business relationship, the business partnership is perspective. Number 12 in this deck is called perspective. And in classic Rider Waite tarot, uh, this is the handman. You know, one of my favorite cards, you know, also means changing your perspective, looking at the same thing from the other, another angle. I need to make a correction. Didn't know why I overlooked. Uh, earlier, I made a brief summary and said things like 
You don't have major arcana or pentacles. Sorry, my sincere apologies. You don't have major arcana when I mentioned that, but you did already have two of pentacles for the second question, and I don't know why. Like now, I think about it. Maybe the two of pentacles actually align me with perspective. This card. They actually look quite similar. Can you see why I got confused too? <laughs> uh, I apologize. Really sorry, guys.、Uh, forgive me, my dear Cauldron One. And let's continue to see what's their pers perspective, influence, and impact on your connection. First and foremost, the so far the only one major arcana in your spread. Guess what that means, my love? These. Early stage struggles, be it sorrow, disappointment, dis、uh, despair, or hopelessness, none of that is set in stone yet at all, except for their impact. Everything else so far we have seen in your spread is moving. There are still groups and groups of moving pieces that are still changing ceaselessly, and certainly those are clear indications. Disclosing to you the fact that you can utilize this person, i.e., your future business partner's perspectives. I mean, according to the handman or perspective card here, this person's major contribution to not your business venture, but to strengthening your connection and enhancing the happiness of your shared moments when you two. Achieve milestones of your side career together. I can even see you two grin at each other because of an inside joke. Right? I feel like you guys would decode the the old scripts of lacking the sense of meaningful achievements in your typical nine to five old jobs and invent your new lexicon of success and purpose in this brand new venture. You don't know just how excited I am when I when I heard this right away in your spread. I'm super pumped by this, like super pumped up. Your potential future startup partner has a bit of a victim mentality, kind of like the ham man. It's their it's their natural character. You might feel such a quality quite annoying at the beginning, but later you'll come to realize that. There is a silver lining due to that. They are a very cautious, very profound thinker. Because I see in this relationship, you are more like the visionary idealist. Yeah, this popped up, so it's getting so much more obvious now. It's like you're the one who can push and push and push both of you towards success, like a propeller. You can give it one hundred percent almost of your focus if you don't have. You don't have to tend to something else at the same time. You want to create the most advanced, the most revolutionary digital or physical products or services that surpasses surpasses just a normal mediocre level of expectations. That's grand ambition, right? And they came into the this picture. This person came into the this picture. Exactly, you guys are a gift to each other. You guys each bring brings your unique strengths and weaknesses, and it's the interplay of these contrasting mindsets that holds the key to success. Dare I say? So I think it's reasonable before we proceed to long-term resolution, we、we'll、just have to ask your guardians to give you additional hints of any. Say hidden blind spots, risks, objects, or things you can hope for or anticipate. That it's best for you to know them before you make life-changing decisions.、Mm -hmm. To you, hidden blind spots could potentially be things like tunnel vision、uh, and overcommitment, since you possess such intense and strong fervor. Sometimes it might blind your view on handling issues that were resulted from real-world, practical, realistic applications, and your zeal might lead you to risk burnout or compromising quality. So, to the other person, their blind spots I see is due to. 
them being overly cautious. So probably they're going to face a uh, risk aversion, i.e. they were overly conservative when making decisions. And hence, they often risked um, missing great opportunities. They would tend to miss many game-changing chances. But when you guys collaborate, cooperate, you guys will create such vibrant work culture. It's like what you have envisioned, right? It's a workplace that's free, full of vibrancy and new ideas. Both of you feel content with the job you're doing, where your passion literally fuels your productivity. So it's basically effortlessly productivity, um, effortless productivity. <laughs> Both of you thrive in such fulfilling work environment. And on the other hand, your business partners hope for sustainable growth, steady improvement of your product's performance overall to mitigate any potentially hard to predict kind of risks. Um, so their ultimate hope is for you, your joint, this joint business to grow beyond the initial excitement. And there you go, my dear Cauldron One together, your long-term resolution well into the distant future is you get to face risks head on, adapting without losing sight of your mission. And that's precisely what Six of Wands is presenting to you, right? <laughs> Over here, Six of Wands. I don't, I don't know how to exactly, I should like maneuver my words to make them sound the best as to properly, properly picture such a magnificent victory. You two as a team will paint. <laughs> Literally, look at this lady with gradient blue hair. She's she's making this controversial uh, power posing. Whether this posture really helps with boosting your confidence, it's still debatable, I believe. Uh, she does look rather powerful, like the Wonder Woman. So hey, <laughs> congratulations, my dear Cauldron One. I've noticed you've got in total four ones that's 40 percent that's uh relatively huge uh according to the 78 tarot cards uh starting from the 10 ace knight and then six the suit of wands just notice the suit of wands recently the journey from 10 to 10 to 6 is pretty much the precise indication of this business partnership from the get-go and until far into the future Creativity, passion, the fire energy, initiatives and business cooperation, uh, motivation, courage, hard work and charisma. These are your truths. Speaking of this exact connection you have in mind right now. And that's all I have for you in this reading. What a mesmerizing triumph you two are going to enjoy together. There are ups and downs and along the way. And that's, that's I would bet. What will make the memory later? When you think of this period of time, I bet that's what you guys will recall the most often. And it makes the most inspiring story, just like the legendary tales behind every successful business. Thank you for listening to this longer prediction and may your week and weekend ahead to be uh, filled with love and light, as brilliant as your new venture looks. I've started this channel two and a half, two and a half months ago only. So I really, really, really appreciate that you are here. You can check out other videos if you want to know more about yourself, your gifts, and your future. I'll keep improving. So please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Cheers. Cauldron 2, it says magical, wonder, and got away. You've picked this black iron cauldron that's brewing, bubbling. I bet it's stuffed with all types of yummy spice ingredients. It looks steamy hot. We don't know what's actually cooking there, but we do know for sure it's going to be something magical and tasty. How are you currently getting along? That's our first question. And what is this spice field aroma infused connection look like at this very moment as we're seeing, uh, as we're speaking? In fact, chef and their determined 
apprentice or protege, the emperor, the most authoritative figure, uh, the epitome or archetype of a father, is emperor, right? Is the emperor. Therefore, I'm thinking it could be more like there's a mentor, advisor, teacher, professor, a spiritual guide versus student, learner, again, apprentice, um, protege, and all that. I sense that type of relationship or, or connection. As to what's a challenge or beneficial energy that's present, that's impacting your current connection right now. You have the Hierophant, right? It definitely implies something like when a student's ready, the teacher will come. And there are a teacher of great authority. In particular, I can see that they're traditional. So maybe I can put it this way. Your mentor, this person you're thinking of right now, they are an expert or an authority on traditional wisdom of a specific field of knowledge that you're seeking currently. Guess what? That said, you're kind of like the type of student who's a bit like a rebel. <laughs> you know, though you have an extremely determined willpower, you're willing to go through whatever challenges to learn the most from your, your mentor. You are innately re rebellious. By rebellious, I actually mean, for example, when your mentor told you to practice this and that, you're going to just be like, no, I'm in fact going to practice this, that, plus these and those. Your willpower oftentimes directly clash with the instructions your mentor offers. Yet, fundamentally, your mentor, of course, is glad that you're willing to do this. You're willing to basically go the extra miles to power through whatever new challenges and difficulties you might face as a rookie. They might be sincerely worried about you, but indeed, they can see how much willpower you really have and how much you're willing to put into the work. Even though you might have, you might then have to perhaps even change, drastically change your lifestyle. Maybe sleep much, much less since you're practicing and trying to get used to or understand thoroughly a specific knowledge field that typically would take a normal person perhaps uh, at least months, sometimes even years and decades to become a master of that field. It's a certain field that requires lots and lots of insight, experience, and repeated practices. I see a challenge that looks like the tension between tradition and exploration. I don't know, you could be frowned upon at your unorthodox methods. On the other hand, you can't help but ask, why don't people want to adapt? Yet, seriously, in those moments, I don't consider these moments as pure challenges, but rather they help you glimpse the magic, the synergy of ancient roots and shooting stars. This is the most perfect uh, metaphor I can think of. It's the balance of the past and the future energies, the cause and the effect. When you face such challenges, to be honest, these are the presence of benevolent energy that's guiding you toward writing your own rules with the help of a sage, someone wise like your mentor. They will help to provide a clear picture when you are in doubt. That's one of the most wonderful benefits you can get from a mentor-student relationship. Then, when I drew for the next question for you, what's the underlying, often unconscious reason behind your current connection? We have seven of cups, choices. I'm seeing your mentor and you are engaging in the search of answers. Answers which, in my opinion, the whole world wants to know. The whole world, oftentimes, many, many people clamored for the, these answers. I won't pinpoint exactly what these fields of knowledge are, but the general spirit matches this idea of the lifelong quests 
of us searching for answers. Let me provide a few examples. It could be the answers of which path to truth? Is logic the only path to truth? Which path to in invention, innovation? Is intuition our real North Star? You know, so on and so forth. Answers to questions like those. So the unconscious underlying reason of you, your current connection,、uh, my dear, surely, it feels like rounds and rounds of interaction between intellect and reverence. You know, a month of lifelong travel we're all participating in. There are multiple questions that pique our interests. It's hard to arrive at the most ideal answers to all these deep questions, so we keep trying to find what they are, and we're often lost in the ocean of interruption, hearsay, misinformation, false wisdom, misleading messages, or pretentious guidance. There are too many potential answers acting as disruption and causing confusion. All of them seem like they're promising enlightenment, and they overwhelm us with the labyrinth of different ideas. The hidden reason of your connection with your mentor is indeed you were one of these people, right? You pondered, contemplated. Lost and found and lost again. You were curious about all these options. How could you sort through the algorithms of thoughts? Thus, you took step, steps, steps, and steps, getting involved and learning about different ways of finding these answers. To make informed decisions, it's more than just a pleasure for me to tell you. Yes. You finally found the best techniques which suit you the most. You're soon going to equip yourself with adequate knowledge to find these answers one by one, slowly but mindfully. Your mentor will assist you in sifting through the cacophony of beliefs and find the symphony of understanding. Here, I think it's great timing to inquire your guardians of the answers to this question: What happened in the recent past? That made the connection like it is right now.、Mm, to be completely honest with you, I asked about the recent past, but here, Four of Cups, meditation. I think your connection is not really based on anything recent. In other words, your connection transcended mere the mentorship in this life, literally. I can see that your mentor has held the type of wisdom that's that's spanning lifetimes. Specifically, I'm seeing they might have accumulated such wisdom over the rise and fall of many Indian empires. Perhaps they've even contributed to a little to the sutras that guided souls, many souls nowadays. Also, I see in the recent past, your mentor went through another awakening. That's why they were guided by their thirst for knowledge, for understanding. So they questioned and got enlightened that way. They thought, like, to best help their students, why not blend old teachings with new insights? It's so much more coherent and easier for their students to understand. Not long ago, I also see during something. Similar to a silent retreat, maybe not only they but also you. You both have started to notice your surroundings in a very profound way through meditation, by listening to the rustle of leaves, savoring the scent of incense, and paying attention to the echoes of footsteps in the cloister. In that stillness, you both embarked on a refreshing. Voyage to reevaluate your lives. Thus, I do see that your paths begin to intersect from from there, like a slow dance of your presence and and purpose. It's so beautiful. I want to apologize if I stutter too much. I'm still getting used to talking, like talking more and more. 
Thank you for your understanding, my dear children, too. Uh, right away, I think we should pose this question to your guardians. What's the strength of this connection? What resources and skills can you each draw on? Your strength is mainly in your uncompromising curiosity. It's your hunger to explore relevant fields of knowledge. You don't want to limit yourself to just practicing one type of technique and that's all. Instead, you actively spread your tentacles to reach and discover other, perhaps even hidden aspects of wisdom around your current pursuit. You as a student, your enthusiasm is greatly contagious and your verbal and commitment happen to also frequently ignite a spark in those fortunate enough to cross your path, which includes your mentor. You haven't refrained yourself from staying a wide-eyed meditator. You still maintain your boundless imagination. You consider it a wellspring of a creativity that bubbled forth, swept forth like a spring that's invigorated by the recent downpour. You don't shy away from showing your eagerness of trying new things. And you literally approach every lesson from your mentor with wide-eyed wonder. Just always being 100% devoted and you're just into this stuff. And people can all tell that. I seriously feel your attitude. Such positive, engaging attitude is incredibly important. Energetically speaking also, regardless of your physical age, such attitude is encircled by the youthful energy field. And it plays such a vital role to rekindle your classmates or cohort members, just others who also take your mentor's lessons. Your youthful energy field can easily rekindle everyone's, including your mentor's passion for teaching such knowledge. Well, I must say, the vaporous tendrils right beneath these glowing letters, magic, wonder, and got away. My eyes were drawn to these letters when I asked, what's the possible development of this connection in the near future? These tendrils must represent something beside king of wands, leadership, I think. So your connection began with respect. That's clear. Also, I got the sensation. Uh, implying one of you will showcase how much they admire the other person's insatiable thirst for truth, for wanting to get, get answers and yearning for, in the best scenario, uh, being hit by the momentum of enlightenment. And without a shadow of doubt, I just know that you already have such reverence for your mentor, you would prefer you will further as well as months turn months turn into seasons. Maybe by the next season, upcoming season, you would highly regard her or or him as one the one and only be, like beacon of light who would be open to help you navigate toward the big picture. Okay, so the message is becoming even more explicit here. In your near future, I see you both have earned the other person's utmost respect. Your respect for each other will literally flow like an underground river. Your mentor respect and admire your dedications to finding the truth and your audacity to dare to question those widely accepted old ways of doing things, of thinking, and try new things yourself, try to do your own things, to dare to integrate new approaches with ancient practices. You're bold enough to strive for improvement of traditional methods. And you, in turn, would revere your mentor in, to such a degree that you would almost vow to honor and pass down their teachings and legacy. And you would take notes of almost every lesson in detail and actually remember it by heart. I almost feel like you simply have to share this precious bond, not only in the near future, 
I see that soon enough you will both understand fate has tied you up together like this for a reason because you still have a long future to spend on sharing knowledge with each other together you see so this mentor student relationship is not gonna end it's not going anywhere anytime soon and related to your own perspective and impact on this connection or bond your guardians answer with the universe i.e the world but the universe is even more grandiose uh no i shouldn't use grandiose because it it's got this somewhat negative connotation uh, i consider the universe more splendid than the world that's it that would do i think you find harmony in this uh, this mentorship in it uh, your heart also finds where it wants to land. I think when you are listening to your mentor's teachings and lectures, you feel like you can foresee the future you talking back to yourself. Your mentor is whom you want to become one day. Hmm. I can tell that you and your mentor definitely seem like a duet of past and future. You consider this mentorship almost like the symbolism of harmony across time. Maybe not just time, but also space and reality. Space could be physical location too. I think you got this. It's across age, generation, time zone, geographical boundary, even culture and identity. That's what has brought you such a sense of peace and harmony. You think by the extension of this bond, you prove that in the pursuit of such knowledge, there's no limit and bound. Only in the fire of inquiry, the spark you get to carry forward and continuously search for your own inner light that truly matters. And I believe you've got to have a glance over what the ultimate realization and manifestation of your soul's light and purpose. We always say love and light. That's it. When you seek to help illuminate someone else's path, first, you gotta acquire the wisdom to evolve into your higher self. From there, align your actions with your intuition and values. We're gonna be looking at what's their impact on this connection as well. For you, your mentor, this mentorship is not a one-way street. It's reciprocal, it's symbiotic. Your mentor imparts wisdom to you. Meanwhile, they also learn from your unique perspective. I think they've evolved quite a bit through your interaction and they'd like to offer further more fresh insights to benefit you intellectually, emotionally, professionally, sometimes even spiritually, depending on what the mentorship is about. Your mentor's major impact on the bond you share is multifaceted. That's fascinating for me to see. I want to say congratulations, Cauldron 2, on such an amazing bond with someone who's got tons of wisdom you can learn. This mentorship holds the key to unlocking both your personal growth and professional development and from what I can tell, also lifelong learning. I also see this bond at its core. Guidance is the cornerstone. That is, this uh, mentorship is about providing guidance and, gu and direction. And they know how to organize and construct their lectures in a way that's going to help their students' dreams find their fulfillment. It's like their guidance can help you bridge the gap between these two they actually realized the best way to communicate the lessons in a fun and easy to understand manner. So you fully grasp the ideas from their lectures. They tirelessly try to lead you to become tomorrow's leaders and they've paved such a journey with encouragement. This is such a powerful connection that your mentor provides more than enough support to help you reach your full potential. Their lessons have provided a great variety of nutrients to help you prepare for your next project. 
that would potentially be the catalyst of getting you ready for a windfall of money, of monetary abundance, a uh, bonanza. The hidden blind spots and hopes in this connection, you got five of swords. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? All the other cards, basically sunshine and rainbows prior to this question, and then this card appeared out of nowhere, specifically just for this question. I have no idea who can say that psychic ability doesn't exist or the cards can't listen to us. Anyway, <laughs> five of swords. And the formation of these swords crossing over each other, not sure why they're aligning in my mind with the bubbling mixture of cinnamon sticks, star, star anise, red beans, and lentils on the cauldron you picked. You remember that? They mixed up in such a messy way. <laughs> Pretty confusing. <laughs> so immediately I feel the, the, the disruption from external forces, you know, uh, the hidden threads or blind spots could come from the risk of burnout if either party neglects self-care since perhaps if none of you are retired yet you might have to multitask do a bunch of things on the side so exhaustion could become a big part that dims your light or impact and also among all students there could be i must emphasize just could be it might very likely not gonna happen, okay? Uh, there could be some kind of performance competition, you know, ego battles, that sort of things. When our ego clashes, the mentorship could suffer because you see, um, pride could blind us from valuable insights. View it as just merely a gentle reminder. It could, it might not happen. The hidden aspects of hopes are actually what I'm really anticipating to manifest. When any types of conflicts arise, when it's handled um, constructively, I see these conflicts in turn will become the collectively the single most significant factor that deepens your collective understanding toward one another. And unquestionably, they will strengthen all your bonds. Maybe in the end, there's going to be a transcendental effect of ego death without using psychedelics. That would be remarkable to experience, my beloved cauldron too. Can you even imagine, my friends? It would be an otherworldly transformative experience, seriously. And we're going to conclude the entire inquiry of friend or foe with one close-up question. What's potentially the long-term resolution of this bond or connection had you dealt with set challenges? Beautiful. This is a super attractive orange-haired lady holding a sharp sword, representing her power of clear communication and the clarity of her thoughts. I see really abundantly that you're gonna stay hungry, stay foolish. You will stay curious, page of swords, right? Curiosity, you will position yourself as a forever lifelong learner. Precisely what we've mentioned already pre previously, the cards resonate with each other even across chapters. Your mentor is growing as you grow. I think your mentor is like you, also a lifelong learner. You both are exceptionally inquisitive souls. You ask questions, challenge outdated uh, assumptions, and you propel each other to grow beyond simply overcoming immediate challenges, but rather you move forward together still as mentor and student on this eternal journey of acquiring more wisdom. Your mentor would never stop helping you declutter your mental fog to enable you to see your path clearly. Together, you would navigate obstacles, untangle complexities, uh, and unveil hidden solutions, and all with the power of your clear minds. Lastly, I see your mentor will guide you in setting meaningful goals, especially those ones 
that transcend mere earthly achievement. And that's all I have for you in this reading. What an intentional, never-ending, inquisitive journey. Your mentor and you will assist each other in charging forward with full force. I believe during this voyage, you will become part of each other's inner compass. Who will provide timely guidance of their actions, uh, decisions, and aspirations? Thank you for listening to this longer prediction. And may your week and weekend ahead be filled with love and light as fun as your mentor-student duel behave when recalibrating your courses of direction. I've started this channel two and a half months ago only, so I really, really, really appreciate that you're here. You can check out other videos if you want to know more about yourself, your gifts, and your future. I'll keep improving, so please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Big love to y'all. Cauldron 3. This is a, I think, copper cauldron. It's a captivating blend of mysticism and fantasy. And you can see a celestial explosion along with a bunch of cosmic bodies, as you can see, radiating and splintering from the center outward. Compared to this first card we got for your first question, how does your bond with this person look at this moment? Whether it's gonna, they're going to be a friend or a foe, um, your card is judgment. It, it's interesting. It's a gracious swan looking into the water and see its reflection, reflecting from the peaceful water. And it's completely different, right? The, the explosion of from the cauldron and the tranquility above the lake. So that's making me, making me wonder um, what's vibrating intensely beneath the peaceful surface of the lake. Uh, I think you can't ignore the force. You can't ignore the calling, right? Especially when fate nudges you towards someone, it's more than mere coincidence. Because nothing's completely, completely random, as we always say. It's a cosmic alignment, a shocking revelation, or an invitation to connect or reconnect. I think of childhood friends who lost touch for years. Yet, when they reunited, due to a seemingly different uh, random occasion, their souls still recognize each other. The bond rekindled effortlessly as if it had been waiting patiently for their path to intersect again. The explosion feels like ending everything once and for all. No more guilt and neither is that a punishment. It's the opposite. It's absolution. The word resonates with forgiveness, redemption, and healing. Um, for real. Have you recently reunited with your childhood or old-time friend? I'm not entirely sure why, but I see you both carry scars. They resemble something you get from past mistakes, old wounds, those traumas. Nevertheless, from the card, I see you're bonding all over again. I can almost hear confession of regrets and slight judgment being made to the confession. There's no way I'd wait to know more about such reunion because I love reunions. I like to know, please, dear guardian angels and energies of protection, what's the challenge or beneficial influence your bond is getting right now? Well, interesting. Why chariot? You see what I mean? It's telling you how beneficial it would be for your current bondage with this person if you two go on an adventure together, go traveling. <laughs> that sounds exciting, yet I believe you guys just reunited and you're still curious about whether this person's really changed or not, like they confessed. Um, how can you all of a sudden tell them you want to go on a trip with them or something like that? Sounds weird. Uh, or maybe if you guys are going to open your hearts and communicate transparently, then you can arrange such meetings in places where you both get to travel a little bit. 
Is that what it's mo supposed to mean? Uh, let me think for just a moment. I think I'm about to get it. I think it's possible. Many people today live in commercial wonderland. You get to have whatever you want, right? Hence, if I'm not mistaken, it's totally possible for you to arrange meetings with this person in different kind of settings. Or better yet, let me tell you this. You don't arrange. I just got this idea. You let them do those arrangements themselves. They've got to show you that they've changed, right? So how about you let them take the responsibility of arranging meetings with you? Or forget it. You don't care. That would be why the chariot, the black and white chariot, appears here. You think so? That's the reason, right? I got it. Yeah, it's not like necessarily the, the circumstances, but the attitude, right? Either they take the offer or they don't. You move accordingly, but it depends on their actions. Uh, you may move closer to them or you move further away. Furthermore, I also happen to see this too. <laughs> Oh, it's very, it's very uh, soothing. You can decide what type of environment you want to meet them in. And you tell them and let them be the one who arrange everything. Uh, you can say you want to see cherry blossom today and feed cute yamas tomorrows. Uh, tomorrow, huh? <laughs> you get to have so much fun in addition to all other types of fun you already have, right? Um... I think, I bet this is a good idea to really like test their sincerity. The underlying mostly unconscious reason behind your bond is Ace of Cups, love. You intuitively recognized each other. I think your souls had a pact since ancient time. We call that a soul contract, right? Not your first ever meetup when you were both younger, but specifically, I mean, the reunion part. It feels like your souls had rehearsed um, the exact situation where you would re-encounter across lifetimes. And these two souls had been practicing opening up their hearts too. So this reunion has seemed like to you and also to the other person, like an incident that cracked open your hearts finally after the, the long wait and dormancy in this world where you thought your heart could never reminisce similar experiences, your hearts have remained shut, shut down for a long time before each other's returning. This time, upon you both, you're both uh, reappearing in each other's lives, uh, your souls have been trained to confess. As soon as you met again, I feel that you've demonstrated to them you can no longer be threatened by abandonment, and they must now bring and present to you their A-game. Yes, you both feel the same. I want to suggest that you look into what a soul contract is. You can call it your pre-existence vow or pre-birth agreement over your previous lives. It's like a sacred promise both of you made beyond the veil of mortality, right? And your souls literally agreed to forge such a spiritual pact uh, before inhabiting your current physical forms. So this soul level pact has become your roadmap of your current lives. It's directing your present journey, uh, relationships and transformative moments like that. Also, it's straightforward, steering, uh, straightforward steering the lessons you've learned Furthermore, when you look into your soul contract with this person, uh, you realize the karmic schematics are exactly the designs of your earlier chance meeting, the emotions you've held for this person, and vice versa, and they'll all make sense. As to your recent past, that sort of turned your connection into the way how it is today, just like the connection is predetermined, you have to surrender to the force that pulled you, dragged you both closer. The connection was established long ago in your ancient lifetimes. So the recent past, even within the scope of your lives, which you are both living and journeying right now, again, the multiple reunions, 
the sparks and follow-up dates and rekindling and all that, it seems like you guys just got to share this part together. Maybe not only for now. From the spread, I can already tell such a bond between you two could last a lifetime and more. What's the most interesting so far for you, my dear Cauldron 3? The mirroring and reflection theme keeps showing up. In all four cards, we are withdrawn for you already. Judgment, the swan is observing its reflection by the water. The black and white horses mirroring each other just in different colors, representing the chariot. Ace of Cups, standing tall above the water as well, with its reflection directly beneath it. And of course, there's uh, wheels here. Black and white cats. They're looking at uh, counterclockwise directions, indicating the rotation and dual existence of darkness and light, right? Most of these cards are telling the story of your destiny together in unison. What we can clearly see is your destiny or fate has set the wheels in motion already. I'm not telling you to be neither stubborn or attached, nor attached. Uh, apparently, the cards are saying otherwise. Since you can already know for sure within within yourself that the wheels already the wheels already up and running by itself and the outcome was already written in your alchemical pact, then there's absolutely nothing you should be doing right now to, to try to change anything. You don't actively chase or wait or guess or second guess. I would never tell you what you should do. It's your decision to make. If I'm conveying the results of this matter to you or providing insightful prediction, which you can certainly expect, I'd recommend that you hold still. For now, perhaps what's written in your contract was you were supposed to be star-crossed, or perhaps the stars themselves conspired in your favor. Just know. Regardless of the outcome, perhaps it's not or it will be what you wish for uh, right now. The final release will come anyway. You will understand why you aren't or you are meant for each other. The last fruit is going to be sweeter than you, you can ever imagine. Either way, have faith in the wheels. Just know the good, the good luck news that would announce a fresh new cycle in your life had already been set in motion in your recent past. And time is an elusive currency, right? It will flow, no, it will fly by quickly. You know one of the most valuable assets beside your patience will arrive in no time. That's for sure. And the wheels are telling you too. It will be exactly when you are not expecting anything to happen. That's when the happy news rain on you, and that's when you will feel the ecstasy. So, my dear friends, uh, let me share with you more fantastic news about the strength, i.e. resources and skills each of you can rely on to enhance such a bond. I got nine of discs, also nine of pentacles, culmination for you. Uh, first of all, Time and patience is indeed your most loyal friends to deepen the relationship. Nine of Pentacles accumulation of wealth will come as time goes by, along with your consistent cultivation of relevant skills, as well as your mature attitude toward attaining self-sufficiency. That is, whether you're going to be together as a couple in the end or not, you, yourself, are going to stay self-reliant in whatever case. If they join your life, that's great. You guys can share your individual resources with each other and maybe add more joint prosperity on top of that. Separately, both of you have sufficient uh, material stability to keep your original, original lifestyle with or without the other person. Paradoxically, Self-sufficiency can energize your bond. I see you guys hence get to stand as sturdy oaks with your roots secured in your individual purpose. You water these two gardens on your own 
And that's nice. And if you end up together, you can also help each other out sometimes. These gardens contain the ground for your passions, careers,、uh, friendships to grow. You realize that a thriving self enriches the collective soil so much more effectively. Since you don't have to seek completion from the other person, you guys are you. You as an individual, individual person, you guys are already complete. So you can instead seek complement to that can add like colors to each other's lives and reach perfection instead. That's exactly why I see your independence is the main type of strength you both can offer to cultivate the connection. You see, you have your one hand extended、uh, to the other person, right? While the other hand. You you still firmly firmly placed on the table to support your your own body weight. I think since we can already feel your independence, surely will help tighten your bond a lot. We can further request for the answer to the possible development of your relationship in the near future. Right, the second phenomenal card of the knights, knight of cups. Fulfillment. <laughs> this is uncanny. I can't make this up, right? Nine of Cups. Traditionally, we call this card the Wish Fulfilled card. So you hear me? <laughs> you had in precisely. We just finished asking the question and understood that both of you in this relationship can fully rely on. First of all, your own self-sufficiency. Your own material stability to strengthen your connection, and now in your near future, I believe since you guys can bring the best of you to the relationship, you guys are gonna enjoy also emotional satisfaction and stability. So it's like physically, materialistically, emotionally, and all that, all satisfaction and stability. I feel like pretty soon. It will be practically speaking, also practically, <laughs> the harvest season of your current connection. Hmm, the bond you've you've established is like ripe, and now you can finally harvest, harvest it. You can literally savor savor many unbelievable, magical, delicious moments together. So congratulations! How wonderful that sounds. It's like finally, right? If by then you feel way too happy and sweet, you don't feel like rushing away to go to work or something. Trust me, you don't have to leave. You can stay there, enjoy the moment as long as you want. I feel like I can see in front of my eyes the smile on your face. So please enjoy even more for all of us. Who tune into the reading right now? <laughs> We all feel so happy for you. I'm super enchanted by the scene, and I'm glad to see your dream come true, my friends. Seriously, I can imagine you're celebrating your once again first anniversary, and then the hundredth favorite song on your shared Spotify playlist. <laughs> I even see in my mind's eyes that. You guys will go picnicking somewhere deep in the forest or by the lake in the park, etc. And I see you guys prepared huge amount of food, <laughs> and you feast like like that. <laughs> oh my, oh my goodness, O M G! You don't know why I'm so happy, and I don't know that as well. <laughs> We should move on, because you know. The best news is yet to come. I just have this feeling, my beloved Cauldron Three. I love calling you friends, my dear friends, each time with the name I gave to your chosen image, because I love to keep that image in my mind so clearly. I can tap into that easily, and just like vague, like I have this vague image as well. At the same time, I can sometimes even feel like I get to see maybe. You, my dear friends, your smiles. So that's really lovely. What do you think?、Um, let's move on to know what your impact and/slash/or perspective 
of this uh, connection. Uh -huh. <laughs> King of Desks, King of Pentacles, Power. Look at you. Out of nowhere, I just got this flash of idea. I think I should also draw a card for the next question right away, unlike the previous two quadrants. For you guys, well, I think um, these two questions are closely related. What's their impact on this relationship? Your impact of, or, or perspective is king of pentacles, power, and theirs. Theirs is six of cups, innocence. <laughs> Thank you, my dear guardian, guardians. This is perfect. It's so delightful to see these two almost opposite energies next to each other like that. So typically we don't buy for power, control, or dominance, especially in loving relationships. But this king is holding his magical disc. Uh, it also looks like a crystal ball. So he probably is very practical, reliable, responsible, and a lot of the times uh, powerful in specific areas in his life, right? So naturally that gives me inspiration you're not really getting involved in this relationship just to find another person you can compete with and see who's got the supremacy am i right i don't see that kind of excessive competitiveness from you you consider this relationship or connection as holding the potential for a great loving partnership so maybe in fact i believe this is your self-protective mechanism since this person newly came back, right? And they've got some kind of um, perhaps uh, even a bit nasty track record long time ago. And now, of course, you're taking your time, like we mentioned, right? So take your time to observe their current behavior and take your time to make any big decisions, potentially life-changing ones. You're like, wait, not so quick. I'm gonna think about this. And you completely, you're right. And you're so correct. You have every right to do so, my love. Take your time. Keep the crown on your head. Wear it nicely. You got this. To regain your trust, they must put their best foot forward. It ain't that easy to just break someone's trust and then pretend you know nothing about it. Think you're not breaking someone's heart or like consider yourself uh, a victim or completely innocent? No, it ain't that easy for them, right? The deer, I believe it's innocent, but I'm not sure about this person. Maybe they think they're innocent. You can't be the judge. You are the judge, in fact. I think at the very least, I'm so sorry to say, they literally think they were innocent um, and they did nothing wrong. I mean, very likely that uh, uh, at least part of them think so. Maybe you can take take the chance to teach them a lesson. Uh, I don't know if I say it in a too much, too harsh way, but they don't have to pay. It's free. It's a free lesson, so why not? They can take it. I think if they can pass the training this time, you can really uh, proceed in this relationship like a queen and a king you guys can wear the crowns of mutual respect that's also like decorated with james of compromise but adequate compromise not overly compromising or blindly compromising because the next question i have actually is about the about the hidden blind spots risks hopes and outlook of this relationship so I don't know if it's going to be like the other two quadrants. I believe they got some challenging cards, specifically as um, the answers to this exact question. So I'm not sure how it's going to turn out for you. Uh, well, hmm, the devil. Um, I already got a feeling similar to what this card means. The devil, um, besides being addicted to short-term pleasures, also, it makes me think of, I have to be blatant with you. Uh, I see both of you within you, the ego selves. Ego is like a, a chameleon that shifts, sways, 
Am I feeling entitled to ask others to sacrifice for us? Um, thinking we're better, so we should never be the ones who sacrifice for others. Uh, considering others owe you because they didn't sacrifice for you. And lastly, uh, thinking yourself deserving to be sacrificed. I think these are all only our egos, not us. I see the risk in your relationship actually lies in ego's dominance. If your egos jump out of your true selves and dominate your outward behavior, then maybe you both can become architects of hierarchies. I'm afraid um, that is uh, someone who measures love by how much the other person or they themselves are willing to sacrifice for the other person. It does sound unhealthy. And that's what the devil here is talking about, right? A, a ram without eyes, but with extra long horns. Ego too, I think it also feeds off our scarcity mindset. When we think our love as an emotion that can be used up, and no matter how much we get from the other person, it's never enough. So sacrifices become the metrics, right? It's kind of comparison. It's how like we compare who loves who more in a relationship. Like I don't know why. But that's the devil I see here. We probably shouldn't stay here for too long. It, let's get ready to welcome and embrace the, uh, and the final answer to complete this amazing quest we share with one another to get to know whether this person is actually a friend or a foe. So what's, what's the potential for the long-term outcome of your connection? Had you found a way to resolve said challenge? Brilliant. You have 10 of cups. Harmony. That's what I'm talking about. Not trying to brag, but I sort of foresaw this, or did I? <laughs> this 10 of cups is breathtaking, full of profound meanings in my eyes. Let me share with you. These 10 cups form, create the shape of an eye, and there are these perfumed, don't ask me how I know their smell. Believe me, I do feel it or I dreamed of it. <laughs> anyway, stunning perfumed pink roses, super dreamy and romantic. I don't know about you, but what, whenever I get flowers, I almost consider them the best presents ever I can get. Better than jewelry or electronics. Everyone's different, right? So in other words, your long-term future is going to be such romantic manifestation. Wow, and you too are going to be the protagonists in this fairy tale where you receive beautiful flowers every day. That's super romantic, like a dream manifested into reality. Or you're the one who's giving out flowers. That's also super romantic. And I see they are going to confess to you, hey, babe, you're the apple of my eye. I'm sorry, not just the apple, but like here, you're the most beloved pink roses in, in their eyes. You guys are made for each other, seriously. And that's all I have for you in this reading. What a gorgeous and serendipitous reunion. It's the kind of reconnection that's meant to happen. And there's no other possibilities, right? You can think like that and have faith in the process, except the ego devil. Have we seen anything with even the slightest negativity? I'm pretty sure we haven't. So as to our main topic of the day, friend or foe? Yeah, more than just a friend. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this longer prediction and may your week and weekend ahead be filled with love and light. The extraordinary romantic kind of love and light that we've seen for you all this time. I've started this channel two and a half months ago only, so I really, really, really appreciate that you're here. You can check out other videos if you wanna know more about yourself, your gifts, and your future. I'll keep improving, so please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and tell me 
like how I can improve. Uh, I will take everything you say into consideration. Until later, ciao.